In all the comments that I've gotten this week in regards to deflector shield builds, I have not seen anyone mention anything like what I'm about to tell you in this video. Now what you're going to see in this video is not necessarily a magic pill for every problem that you're going to have with a deflector shield build. However, it is going to set you up in a good starting position so that you can make changes to a deflector shield build, so that you can put on rolls that you want rather than what you are being told you need. Now before we go into too great of a detail on the actual shield, I do want to get out some very basic points. First off, we're going to be referring to this side as the strong side, or the main side. It's basically the side with your pistol. The other side is going to be the weak side, or the backpack side, or the specialization weapon side. All right, just so we get that clear. If we look at other shields, considering the bulwark, we can see that, yeah, it provides a huge amount of frontal protection, with pretty much only the feet showing. And the only real weakness is either from the top, if you're, you know, just sitting right below a sniper or something like that, or if you manage to get flanked by enemies who can actually shoot you in the side. Besides for that, the shield is really, really strong, right? When you look at the Crusader, obviously it's designed for a more mobile style of combat, right? You got the fully automatic weapon, but of course that comes with two main costs. The fact that it is the weakest of the three shields by far, and it of course has a much smaller surface area than the Bulwark, meaning that you don't technically have full frontal body protection. However, in PvE content, the Crusader shield offers more than enough protection for frontal damage. There really isn't any enemy that can actually deal damage to you while your Crusader shield is active. And the only real exceptions to those are like some random explosions or the occasional sniper who actually is in an elevated position and can use the lower height of your shield to get a proper headshot. Now by comparison, the deflector shield is all right. I mean, it is the second tankiest of the shields, but it does offer the least amount of coverage. But in return, what you get is the ability to actually deflect bullets back at enemies. And this is of course based on your skill damage and your skill tier, armor tier, you know, the actual tier of the shield, depending on how much damage you can actually do with the shield. Now, of course, like the Crusader, it does sit rather low on the actual character, so it does allow snipers who are in an elevated position to be able to headshot you. But of course, this raises a rather important question. If neither shield actually provides adequate protection for the head, why is it that the deflector shield is known as the shield that needs protection from elites? Why can elite enemies shoot you in the head while you're using the deflector, but not the Crusader? I mean, it would just make sense that regardless of the shield that you're using, if they are aiming for the head, they would be able to target your head. They generally aim for a hitbox that is located around your head. So this allows them to actually shoot over shields more accurately. And it doesn't matter if it's the Crusader or the Deflector, they can generally get accurate headshots. However, for most generic enemies, the hitbox is located on the torso. However, there are a few elite classes like the Assault or Grenadier and the Heavy that do actually have a more accurate hitbox that is slightly further up on the torso. However, due to the downward angle of the deflector shield, there is a small gap that actually allows the elites to deal damage to the player in this area. And what we are going to be looking at is how to mitigate this. How can we take advantage of the game's mechanics to ensure that we are not giving the elites that have this ability an advantage over us? How can we take advantage of the game's mechanics to allow this shield to really perform better? And while we're at it, we should talk about some of the misconceptions of the shield, right? You don't need to be a certain range or proximity to an enemy. It doesn't really affect the shield all that much. The only real difference that distance makes is pretty much just like any other build. You know, if you want to be further away, you get more survivability just because you're less likely to take massive amounts of damage. And if you're closer up, of course, it's a lot easier to hit enemies in the head. I mean, that's pretty much it. Now with the shield itself, yes, there is some advantage for being up close because it does have optimal range, kind of like every other weapon, except the optimal range for the Crusader shield is pretty much like two or four meters. It's, it's extremely close. Once you get past that, you will actually see that the damage that you do to enemies drops significantly. Now, like we we're already talking about, the generic aim spot for most enemies is center mass on your torso, and the shield does a good job of covering that against most enemies. The problem is, we're looking at how enemies actually target you while you're at an angle. This is where you're going to get most of your trouble. 
And we can see in real world situations the way that most players are actually going to get around this. When you look at legendary, a lot of the times you're going to get into like a little alcove or a little cubby. You're going to be using the terrain features to basically protect yourself, right? In this case, we are using that wall to hide our weak side, right? It is going to hide that backpack side so that the enemies can't get an angle on that and take advantage of it. This will present the main face of our shield directly at the most enemies possible. And of course, there's going to be a small sliver of our strong side that's going to be maybe able to take some hits from the enemy, but not many. Now, of course, when we look at the actual aiming areas while we are at an angle, we can see that we do expose a little bit more of ourselves against regular enemies. How does this actually look to the enemy? Now, if we are pointing straight at an enemy, this is what the enemy sees. A small little sliver area between the chin and the shoulder. Now, if we actually start to turn towards our pistol, meaning that we are showing the enemy our backpack, what we are going to see is that we are exposing even more of our chin, neck, and shoulder area. Now, if we start to turn back across, meaning we are turning our strong side towards the enemy, what we are going to see is that we are actually putting more of the shield in front of that danger zone that elites have. We are covering up more of our chin and neck. Now, this is something that most players don't get to see because obviously it's really hard to actually just look at yourself while you have a shield on. But when we match this up to the elite's target area, we can see that it is by far a huge amount of coverage compared to turning the weak side towards the enemy. And we can see this in real world, right? We can test this out quite easily. If we let them see our backpack, we are going to take massive amounts of damage. However, if we turn that strong side, meaning we're getting that diamond up towards our face, they're going to be getting a lot more reflected bullets at them. Now, of course, the other thing to talk about is snipers, right? They have that advantage when they're up high. They can take advantage of their hitbox on you to be able to basically shoot you in the head and avoid the shield altogether. But we can use this mechanic to our advantage as well. When we get up high with the shield, we kind of gain the reverse aspect of that, right? We take away the ability for them to actually get the weak spots. And as long as the enemy is not at an extreme angle to your right or to your left, then you will get a noticeable difference in the amount of bullets that you actually reflect away from yourself. You will deal a lot more damage to the enemies with your deflector shield because they will not be hitting you, they will be hitting the shield. Right? When you look at the shield from the enemy's perspective when you're up high, you can see that you are covering pretty much all of your vital areas. You are completely blocking out their hitbox so that they can only target your shield. And then we can take this a step further. We can use this same exact principle, except while we are on the same level as the enemy. All we simply have to do is aim upwards. This will have the same effect as if we were actually above the enemy. Now, of course, you have to be careful with this because it does create its own issues. But if you are in certain situations where you are actually on the same level as some serious damage dealing enemies and maybe you're in a tricky situation you know this could possibly save your life now of course it's not a magic pill it's not a remedy for everything possible in the game but what we can see here is by taking advantage of that same mechanic if they see us like this when they're down below us they see you know the shield in front of our face and they can't hit it well how do we take advantage of that by aiming the shield up, we get the same effect. The shield goes up over our face. Now, of course, you don't want to go to the extreme. You don't want to point directly at the sky because then, of course, you're not reflecting bullets at them. You're not being able to actually see the enemies. You know, it's just, it's useless, right? So you, you do want to maintain some sort of balance. You do want to, you know, use it just so you can actually get the most effect out of it without basically revealing all of your vital organs underneath. Because if you have enemies to the left or the right of you, it's going to be game over. Now, simply put, the angle of your shield has a huge amount of impact on the actual bullets that you receive, right? It is not just cramming in protection from elites. It is not just, you know, running a foundry bulwark. Now, I seriously hope that a lot of you actually take a look at this information, actually try to figure out if you can utilize it in a build. And that's what I'm doing, because I actually want to reduce the reliance on protection from elites with this build. I want to reduce the reliance on the exotics that are always used or the gear set that is always used. While those are great sets to use, I don't want them to be the only way that this shield could be used. I don't want them to be, you know, so cookie cutter that you have really like three options and that's it. I want it to feel a little bit more diverse than that. And 
I think that if the shield is utilized properly uh, with the correct angles and with the correct elevation, I think that there can be a lot more customization that can be taken advantage of with the deflector shield. Now, of course, I understand that I'm probably going to get plenty of comments from people who didn't actually watch the video. Now, feel free to make the comments. I, I know I'm going to get them anyway. Before you do, if you're at least listening to this part, you might want to watch the video in full. You might want to actually test out what I'm telling you. And you might want to try to think outside the box a little bit. But anyway, guys, I hope you took something from this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you possibly find a way to implement what I just told you into your current gameplay. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.